today we are going to be talking about how to start a print on demand business without a computer. I am your subject matter expert today because, well, I actually started my print on demand business without a computer. The only thing that I had when I first started my print on demand business was my iPad. And I know a computer isn't necessarily something that everybody has access to. And so I wanted to create this video because those of you who may be watching who want to start a print on demand business, but don't feel like you maybe have the resources like a computer or laptop in order to do so, you can still get started with print on demand today, even if you only have a iPad or a tablet like myself, or even just your smartphone can really do the same things. You're just gonna be working on a smaller screen. I only had this for the first seven, nearly eight months. My print on demand business truly blossomed with just this iPad and a dream. A fun fact, I actually started my YouTube channel with just this iPad as well. So is it actually possible to start a print on demand business with only a tablet or maybe even only a smartphone? Yes, absolutely yes. Does it have its challenges? Yes, absolutely yes. And so the point of this video is just to show you how possible it really is and how you can do the same if you might be limited to what types of devices you have access to and you can start your own print on demand business even if you don't necessarily have the funds yet to invest in something like a laptop or a computer. If you are watching and you are new to learning about print on demand and what all is involved with a print on demand business, print on demand is a business model that allows you to essentially have a physical product shop where you do not carry any physical inventory. What you do on your side of things is typically you will create the designs for products that you are looking to sell very common amongst print on demand is selling apparel. So if you were to be selling apparel, you would be creating a design for that apparel product and then listing that product with your design on it on a platform like Etsy or Shopify. When a customer then comes along and purchases your product, that information gets sent over to your print provider that you would be working with who will actually make, package, and ship that entire order for you. So really what your role in the process is, is creating designs and handling any customer service and backend type work for the business. What's great about this business model is it is a very low barrier to entry, meaning there is not a lot of hoops that you have to jump through in order to get started, such as upfront costs. You don't have to pay for large amounts of inventory. You only pay for the product when it actually is purchased and you're paying for the wholesale cost or production cost of that product. And depending on what site you might be using to sell your print on demand products, there's usually some associated fees with the site, such as processing fees, transaction fees, or you could also be potentially investing in advertising. On Etsy, there's Etsy ads. If you are running a Shopify store, you might invest in things like Facebook ads or even Pinterest ads. Now, I don't wanna completely glamorize print on demand. I try to be very real and honest here on my channel. While there is a low barrier of entry to get started with print on demand, typically with a business model that has a low barrier of entry, also comes a lot of competition. And there is definitely a skill set that does need to be developed and learned in order to actually stand out and succeed in the print on demand business world. When it comes to running my print on demand business, there are three, that's four. There are three main apps that I use to do so. The first being Canva, the second is Procreate, and then the third is just my internet browser. Canva is what I used to create most of my designs. What's great about Canva is they actually have an app that you can download. So instead of having to go into your web browser and going to Canva's website, I found it a lot more user-friendly to use the Canva app. Now, because I do use an iPad, I do have a iPad Air, which does have the ability to use the Apple Pencil. That has been a really helpful tool when it comes to my designing and just resizing things, as well as drawing some things, which I actually do in Procreate, which I'll talk about here in a second. But you could also just use your finger and that works perfectly fine. The second app that I used a lot for designing or just to customize certain graphics and elements is Procreate. 
A website that I used a lot and still use a lot is Creative Fabrica, Creative Fabrica. I don't know the correct pronunciation of that, but I have always heard it be pronounced as Creative Fabrica, or at least I heard it pronounced that way for the longest time. And so that is what stuck with me. Let me know in the comments how you pronounce it. But what I do like with Creative Fabrica is the different graphics and elements that you can download from there. I have just the yearly plan. I think it was like $47 for the entire year and you get unlimited downloads. I download graphics and elements as well as different fonts. And what I particularly do with some of the graphics that I find is actually upload them into Procreate, where in Procreate, I can customize them a little bit more. So some things that I will do in Procreate to customize the graphics that I do find and want to use is I will erase parts of them. I will re color parts of them. I will combine parts of them. This is something that I think is a lot easier to do if you are working with some type of tablet that has a stylus pen pencil that goes with it because you're going to have a little bit more precision when it comes to it. Procreate is an app that is specific to Apple products, but there are tons of other different drawing type apps like Procreate available. One of the issues that I found myself running into in the beginning was with storage because I was downloading a lot of images, a lot of graphics, all types of different things for me to use. And so that ends up taking up a lot of storage on your device, depending on how much storage you do have, what I have found works best is investing in some type of cloud storage can be really helpful when it comes to storing all of your images and not running out of space on your device. When you start using up a lot of space on your device, it's going to make it a lot slower, which makes it harder to use, harder to work with, and just really not the most efficient. What's worked for me, I have just invested in my iCloud drive, but another way that I have stored files is using Dropbox. They have a couple different plans, so I would just usually start off with the cheapest plan, and then if it got full, then I would then upgrade to the next one so I wasn't really spending more than what I actually needed. Another thing that you can do is invest in an external hard drive. I didn't actually do this until I got my computer and now I store a lot of things on my external hard drive. It's really nice because I can just bring it with me everywhere I go. But if you're using any type of cloud storage, it essentially works the same way as long as you have your login and you have access to internet. That's maybe the one caveat, I guess you could say. If you don't have Wi-Fi or you aren't able to connect to like a hotspot or something like that, then you aren't gonna be able to get into your cloud, whereas the external hard drive that's a little bit more concrete in the sense of I don't have to be on Wi-Fi or something like that to access any of my files on here. But just in general, I just wanted to mention that about storage because I quickly ran into the little notification saying that I was out of storage and that I didn't have any more room to be saving all of the files that I was saving. So just a quick little tip there. When it comes to the things that I'm using my internet browser for on my iPad is where I'm doing my research. So this is where I'm going to be diving into keywords, looking for keywords that are high search volume, low competition. Those are really the areas of opportunity for you if you are looking to scale and see sales and see momentum within your print on demand business, as well as I do my design research and finalize my listings, add my designs to my products with my print provider, make those listings public and ready for sale. If there's one thing that I had to pinpoint my print on demand success with, it would definitely be the research and actually spending so much time looking at numbers, looking at listings, looking at bestsellers, looking at the data behind those listings. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hi. You can't just not pet your dog when your dog comes to get pet, you know? Okay, bye. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. I would take a bullet for my dog. What I was saying before I got very kindly interrupted, I don't mind that type of interruption at all, was that research was really just a big component of really growing my shop. And I find that research really does have to be kind of like that foundational core pillar when it comes to anybody who wants to see sales and wants to see 
results in their print on demand business, especially today where it is more competitive. Competition isn't necessarily a negative thing or a scary thing. If there's competition to be had, that's because there is something of value to be gained. So I would encourage anybody to not be fearful of the competition. All it means is that there is an opportunity at your fingertips. When it comes to my research, most of my research started directly on Etsy, looking at listings that were already existing. I didn't start with any specific tools. I didn't know really a lot of information about research tools when I first began. And so I just looked at bestsellers, looked at what titles they were using and dove into my research that way. But as I got more advanced, I did start using more research tools and just getting a little bit deeper into the analytics of what I was looking at on Etsy. One of my favorite research tools, Everbee, which I talk about Everbee all the time on my channel, but if you're not familiar with Everbee, it is typically used as a Chrome extension. And I have tons of tutorials on my channel showing how to use it as a Chrome extension. But when I was first starting and I just had my iPad, it's not really something that you can do or use as a Chrome extension. So instead I had to get familiar with the app version of it. And so it's not a downloadable app, it's just in your web browser. So actually how you can go to it is just everbee.io and that's gonna take you to their site and you can actually access your account and access all of the product analytics, all of the same things that you typically are looking at maybe through a Chrome extension or if you're not familiar with Everbee yet, the tools that you might be seeing other creators using in videos that use Everbee, you will see all of that same information through the web app version of it. So for example, if I'm just in here searching Father's Day gifts, what we can actually do here is take a look at the products that are bringing in the most revenue as well as something that I really like to look at is the listing age. I love finding listings that are fairly new that are also performing really well. To me, that's a really great indicator that what they have is something that is new, it's trendy, and it's something that could potentially be explored more because it's on the rise. So here we can see all of these listings. They are ranked by monthly revenue currently. We can see this very top listing over $55,000 per month. It has been on Etsy for 29 months. And so even though we're on my iPad, I can still click in to the listing and pull up the listing details just as I would in the Chrome extension. For my research, what I would usually be looking at here is the tags. I like to expand the tags. And something that I pay attention to is actually the keyword score that's on the far right here. You can see that there is a number associated with all of the keywords being used. So the higher the keyword score that you do see, that means that there is a higher search volume to competition ratio. Ideally, you want more search volume, less competition. However, depending on how competitive a niche is, for example, Father's Day, this is a pretty competitive niche. Some of these keywords, you're not going to see a very high keyword score at all because there's tons of other listings looking to tap into Father's Day. Where you usually find the most success is when you get to be a little bit more specific and finding a sub niche that can fit well into Father's Day. My go-to print provider and who I have used since day one is Printify. If you are just starting out or just considering getting started after seeing this video and knowing that you can do it from a tablet or phone, then I definitely encourage you to get started with Printify as well. The reason that I recommend Printify is for one, they have a really great product catalog that they're actually still adding to. I feel like every time I log into Printify, I see that there's new products and new things available, which is great and is great for print on demand where it's gonna help keep you competitive, where you're able to offer different types of products. And the second reason I recommend Printify is because of how they work. So let me explain. They are actually a network of print providers. So Printify is kind of the umbrella over all of the different print providers underneath. Different products have different print providers. And why I really like that is because in my experience, any of the product types that I have sold with Printify, I am able to have fulfilled by multiple different print providers if I choose to do so. Now I have some of my go-tos, for example, I sell a lot of apparel. So two of the print providers that I really like under Printify's network are Monster Digital and Swift POD. They are very popular and very common amongst individuals who sell apparel in the print on demand space. But what's great is if 
Monster Digital is my first choice. And say my customer ordered a white size small t-shirt. If Monster Digital is out of stock of that white small size, what? If Monster Digital is out of that size small white t-shirt, but Swift POD does have it in stock, I can reroute that order to Swift POD and have them make, fulfill, package, ship. This is what has made my experience with print on demand absolutely fantastic. Of all of these sales that I have had, I have never run into an issue where an item is out of stock and it is not able to be fulfilled by another print provider in the network. I have never run into that issue absolutely ever, which I think is quite remarkable to say, honestly. And for me, it has made the business side of things just truly a breeze. But besides all of that, I am easily able to add in the design for my product and then publish it, which will sync it over to my Etsy shop where I finalize the listing. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you use for your print on demand business? Do you do it on a tablet as well? Do you have a computer, a laptop? What does your current setup look like? And as always, I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and I will see you in the next one.